Hey there, it's Deb, and I am standing outside of my most recent fix and flip. There it is. This is a look at the 850 square foot ranch. I absolutely love doing ranches. And unfortunately, there's so few of them that become available in this area because once they buy them in this area, they stay in them forever. I mean, literally people live in them average of 35 to 45 years in this area because there's so few of them. So this is a lot of fun. I'm really grateful we got a chance to bless it and love it and make her beautiful again. I'm gonna go inside and take a quick um, video of the work that we did and just share that with you and um, stay tuned. So I just thought I would share some of my experience and wisdom with you, especially if you are a first time fixer and flipper as far as some of the things that you need to have set up in advance. And then some of the things that you can do to a fix and flip that make a huge difference and add a tremendous amount of value, especially if you're selling to a first time home buyer, because that way your property will get sold quickly and for a top dollar. So in this picture here, what you're looking at is the, um, the kitchen, almost completely gutted. All the cabinets have been taken out, the countertop, the sink. Um, what needs to be taken out in that picture is the um, fake brick that was their backsplash and then the checkerboard floor so then we can then do what was done on the right. So we just want to talk about gutting for a minute. One of the things that can delay your renovation project is you not being prepared. And what does that mean when I say being prepared? What that means is that you want to know exactly what you're going to be, going to be removing and replacing before you close, if you can. And if the house is empty, many times you can get into that property, go over it with your, you know, your laborer who's going to be gutting the house because you don't need a skilled labor person to remove things from a property. You need a skilled laborer to put them back in. So the labor range for that person is going to be anywhere from as little as $10 an hour to as much as $15 an hour for it to be gutted. And um, when I first started renovating properties, I know I thought, wow, this is going to take a week for two people because it just seemed like there was so much to do. And what I was surprised at is that with two guys, and when you're very organized and they know exactly what to remove, they can get a complete house gutted for you. Now, I'm not talking about taking down the walls and all that sort of thing, but like everything out inside of usually around four hours. And that's as long as they know exactly what has to go. And there's a dumpster there. So those are the two things that are going to make that move quickly and smoothly for you. The next picture that you're going to be looking at here is, um, this is another thing that you'll see if you follow me, you know that I open up walls almost on every single project. The only properties I don't open the wall that goes from the kitchen into the dining room or from the kitchen, like in this case, into the family room is when there's um, brick in it. Sometimes there's a um, chimney that runs through it and there's just not that much of an advantage of opening up the wall because the chimney is totally in the way of doing that. And the chimney many times doubles, if it's not for a fireplace, many times it's not. What it is, it's a flue for the gases that are being emitted from a furnace in a hot water tank. You could remove uh, a chimney and redirect that to the outside of the house differently but that's expensive and that's time consuming. And if there's a chimney in the wall, I would just leave the wall up, but that's really rare. So what you need to know when you're going to be doing an opening like this is the number one question you need to answer, is this a bearing wall? And you can Google to figure that out. Um, my guys have become so proficient that we'd go in the basement and we can tell by looking at which way the joists are running if that's a bearing wall. And if it's a bearing wall, you will need to get a lambs beam, which is a structural beam, which is made out of wood, and you'll need to support it on each end, and that will carry the weight. And I would tell you that 70% of the walls that we open up are not bearing. They're just a wall that's dividing the room. It's not carrying weight, so you can just take it down. But you need to know that before you take it down because the wall has to be supported 
and then it also has to be um, restructured so that it can carry the weight. And it's not that expensive. I mean, a lamb's beam is going to run you a couple hundred dollars. The support beams on the sides are going to run you probably another hundred dollars, and it's most likely a day's worth of labor to get that all taken care of, which for a minimal investment, let's say it's $500 or maybe $600, it makes a, it really is a game changer when it comes to fixing flipping. And you can see it here, it's added an open space field to this little ranch, and it's also created a natural place to sit uh, which is where the granite is, where the, somebody can pull up two stools there and then they can look into the kitchen, which people love to do that, like when someone's cooking, like watch them cook, share the cooking experience, and that's why I love islands and kitchens. The next photo here is where I'm going to talk to you about, and you can see where I have added crown molding. Like this was just a very average. Um, actually, it was um, like a Sears Roebuck house that was module and put together. And what we did was we skimmed out those module seams that were every like four feet. And then we added crown molding. And crown molding is inexpensive as well. Like if you negotiate it right and you get the right supplier and they know you're doing volume, you, you literally can get a 12-foot stick for about $12. You need four of those per room. And it takes a craftsman, a skill, this, this does require a skilled craftsman because you want your mutter joints to be really tight and beautiful so that you don't have two inches of caulk in every corner. And it's a game changer. I mean, I'm going to show you how it looks in the other picture, but you can see it here on the right hand side, the crown moldings up. And then you can see on the, on the left hand side how it looks without the crown molding, just very blah and boring. It gives it a higher end decorator look when you add crown molding. Now you don't have to add it to every room. You don't have to add it to the bedrooms. You can just add it to the areas that they're going to be living in the most, which is your living room, family room, dining room, kitchen area. You don't have to do the bedrooms. The other thing that I do, which is another very inexpensive thing to do and adds huge value, is changing out the doors. If you buy a house and they have that flat face like these all did, I can't show you one here because we've already changed the doors out. But it's just that, you know, it just looks like a piece of wood with a knob on it. It has no appeal to it. So we changed out all the slabs in this house. And if you buy a door that's sitting in its, um, in its framing, that's going to be a little more expensive. But what it saves you is all the extra time. If you just buy a slab, then your guys have to position it right and drill out the hole for the, the doorknob and where the hinges go. So what I do is I spend a little more money because I buy it in the, you know, it's frame that we can, it's all, everything's all done. The, the, um, the hinges have been notched out, the doorknob has been drilled, so they just have to, you know, just pop it on. It's, it's a, a really easy fix. So for a slab, you're going to pay anywhere between $30 to $42, $45 um, in the, God, I can't think of the word for it. It's like, it's not the framing, it's something else, but I'm sorry, I'm blanking out on it right now. But that adds another $40 to it. But if you look at the labor that it costs to line it up and drill it and notch out, it's almost equivalent and it goes a lot faster. So that's been my decision. There's not a huge savings there as far as them buying the slab and drilling it or installing it with already done. It just moves quicker. So that's the savings that I that I've experienced with changing doors out. Again, it's another one of those small things that make a huge difference and is a game changer and gives that higher end decorator look. And then you start, you know, in this particular project, as you can see, I'm kneeling down there and this was, it's, this was like so ugly in the house. The windows were ugly. I replaced all the windows in the house. I'm able to get a supplier and I looked around and talked to a lot of people and really negotiated the cost. So my windows for a beautiful uh, replacement window where they, they take the old one out, they haul it away, they install the new one, and it includes the window is $250 a window. But under this window, they had an air conditioner that had um, been running for years and it just started rotting out the encasement and it 
on the inside where I'm kneeling there, it just was really ugly. So we removed the air conditioner and we, my, my skilled tradesman, who's my carpenter, trimmed that out and we refaced it. And you can tell on the right hand side, it just gives it that really rich look. All those little things make a huge difference when you're, you know, you're renovating. And on the right hand side there too, you can see where we have trimmed and framed out the opening as well which gives it a nice finished look and again it just it just gives it more of a high-end look and then you can also see that you want things to match and flow that's another little decorator's secret is that you want there to be this feeling of you're moving things are tied together it's congruent when you go into one room there's a little bit of color that you use in one room to the next or you use it with your decorating because that's the powwow in my renovations is that it's not like it's chopped up with color or chopped up with look and let me explain that a little bit. So I pick one primary color that I typically run through all the bedrooms and the common hallways. And then I only pick one or two fashion colors and you can see on the right hand side one of the fashion colors is on the wall which is that really beautiful uh, coral reef. I'm falling in love with that color. And then the second color, my fashion color, I used for the ceiling because I wanted that room to really, really stand out and pop. And it was really effective. Now, if you look under the granite there, that's another, that was added. It's an added area. On the other side of it that you're not seeing, there's two 24-inch cabinets. It's acting as an island, which gives that um, buyer added drawer space and also storage space with cabinets cabinetry so on the other side are two base cabinets and then facing me what was facing me was just the raw back opening of a cabinet so what do you put there and what we did was we replicated the same look that we put under the windows in the previous picture that I pointed out so it looks like it was done on purpose you know it doesn't look like we kind of just did something completely different so it matches The next picture is interesting to me. And what's interesting t to me in these renovations is how much of this turquoise I find in houses that are like 40, you know, 50 to 45 years old. That must have been the trending colors because I find so many, so many uh, rooms painted in that color. And I just wanted to show you that how this really beautiful silver strand gray from Sherman Williams looks in the room. I also wanted to point, it, point out how beautiful the floors look on the right hand side because we refinished them and these were under heavy ugly carpets and you'll be amazed at what is under carpets. Many, sometimes it's just plywood and then you go over it with a, a new flooring but many many times there's some type of hardwood floor whether it's pine or maple or oak and you can refinish them and they come out absolutely gorgeous. I want you to look at the left hand picture up near the ceiling. You're going to see a line and that's, those seams were throughout the house because this was a module house that was put together and the seams were not um, camouflaged. They, so we actually camouflaged them by using um, tape, drywall tape, and then we did three coats of skim and we just smoothed them out so they disappeared into the ceiling, which is what you want again, to give it a high-end decorator look. So there's um, one of my workers and he's filling in the seam there. And in this particular bedroom, not only did we have to fill in the seam, but we had to match the pattern of this dippling on the ceiling. And I want you to know that um, I am so against dippling and swirling of the ceilings. It just cheapens um, it, it's not a decorator look. I don't care how well it is or how beautiful it is. It is really, 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 really rare that I keep any sort of texture on the ceiling. I just feel a fresh um, drywalled, if you can afford it, if you can drywall that ceiling, then go ahead and do it. Um, I think it just is, it's just a, a much nicer look. It is a little more expensive. Um, to drywall each room, any room, you know, pretty average size room, not any room, sorry, I didn't mean to say that, is going to run you with drywall and labor and joint compound and sanding. 
you can figure about, for all walls, I'm not just talking about the ceilings, it's going to run you somewhere between $500 and $650 a room. So keep that in mind if you run into a project where you feel like all the rooms need to be drywalled, um, you're going to be gauging it inside of that price range. So here's the last um, video, um, the, the last part of this video I'm going to go over only because I tend to go on and on and it's lengthy. I'm going to do a part two on 125 Garden. And if you want to continue watching, um, you can take a look at part two of these vid this video series. So this is the bathroom. And if you look at the picture on the right hand side, you can see how beautiful the new doors look. I talk about and go over how important it is to keep a similar sheen throughout the house. If you pick black, which I did, stay with that matte black throughout the house. If you're going, you can add one more sheen to a black matte, but that's it. Don't be doing like brass in one room and brush nickel in another and chrome in another. You only want two sheens, one if you can help it, because that gives it the highest end decorated look throughout the whole house. You can see in this picture that I have black matte on the faucet, the knobs, the towel bar, um, the toilet paper holder. So I have it throughout, really I have it throughout the whole house. The only added sheen that I added, and it was just to that light fixture in the kitchen, was that light fixture came with black matte and a little bit of kind of a shabby chic wood, which was a grayish color. So I only added one extra sheen inside of this whole renovation on any of my faucets or fixtures. So important. It's a decorator secret that you need to know. This bathroom was in really good shape. We did change out the window. We did trim out the window on the inside and the outside. The walls were in fantastic shape. We did replace the flooring, the medicine cabinet, the toilet, the, um, the faucet, and the towel bar. The tub was in fantastic shape, and so was the tub surround for the tub. So we kept all of that. And many times you'll find that. You'll go into the bathroom, and you're like, oh, the bathroom is not awful. It's actually in good shape. So if you're in a tight budget, don't touch it. You know, Just leave it, and then work with the other parts of the bathroom to enhance it and bring that value up. And it came out absolutely stunning and beautiful. No, it's not brandy brand new. It doesn't have a brand new tub or a tub surround, but it has everything that it needed to bring the value of the bathroom up. And this, again, this is a first time home buyer's house. So you're going to be looking at like you're giving the home buyer the best that you can to stay inside of the budget that you've created to enhance the property. In the next video, I'm going to be going over in the same property, 125 Garden Street, uh, staging. I'm going to be talking a little bit about ceilings, my experience with ceilings. I'm going to go over the um, exterior, some of the things that we did to enhance it. And that'll wrap up um, the information that I have for you and my experience and some of the wisdom I wanted to share with you on this fix and flip. Thanks so much for following me and I'll be talking to you soon. And bye for now.